watching part 4 of Cyclone Education Week. Here's a reminder of the schedule. You may notice that this part of the video has been split into two parts now, running today and tomorrow. Part 5 will now be part 6 on Saturday. Earlier this year I visited southern Florida to explore its hurricane history. The area is one of the most prone to hurricanes in the whole of the Atlantic Basin, with over 80 landfalls since 1950. The first of our featured storms is the 1919 Florida Keys hurricane. 1919 was a quiet season for the Atlantic, featuring just five known storms, of which there were only two hurricanes. However, one of them delivered quite a blow to the Florida Keys, and in particular here in Key West, uh, where the storm's landfall is to this day the sixth most intense on record for the United States. Well, the storm had tracked across the Greater Antilles and the Bahamas, and attained Category 4 intensity as it entered the Florida Strait, where it passed just miles from Key West at its peak intensity. The storm then entered the Gulf of Mexico and was predicted to strike Louisiana, but without today's technology, forecasters lost track of the hurricane. Only the next morning was it known that the storm was in fact heading for Corpus Christi, and it would arrive only in a few hours. In the end, both the Keys and Texas suffered heavy damage from the storm, causing 772 fatalities and $22 million in damages. Seven years later, there was the Miami Hurricane of 1926. What became known as the Great Miami Hurricane peaked as a strong Category 4 storm, making landfall near here at Coral Gables, just south of Miami. During the half-hour passage of the eye, many people took to the streets believing that the storm had passed, only to receive the second half of the storm, which took many lives as a result. In the end, 372 were killed, and the storm caused $100 million in damages, a staggering amount for the time. It took only two years before the eastern coast of Florida was struck again by another Category 4 storm. The 1928 hurricane season, or what we know of it, was rather inactive with uh, only six storms forming. However, four of those became hurricanes, and indeed one of those was the 1928 Okeechobee hurricane, which formed near the Cape Verde Islands and intensified as it passed uh, through the Central Atlantic and then the Leeward Islands, and indeed made landfall in Puerto Rico as a Category 5 storm. Um, and then the storm made for Florida via the Bahamas and made landfall not far from here at West Palm Beach um, as a strong Category 4 hurricane with winds of 145 miles per hour. Uh, this storm then crossed directly over Lake Okeechobee, causing disastrous consequences. The Okeechobee hurricane was another Cape Verde storm which progressed across the Atlantic, striking the Lesser Antilles and then making a Category 5 landfall on Puerto Rico. Here, entire villages in the path of the eye were swept away, that only 312 were killed, a comparatively small number compared to the San Cabiaco hurricane 29 years before. The storm then tracked through the Bahamas as a Category 4 storm, and then made landfall in Florida near West Palm Beach. Human losses near the landfall area were low here too, though severe damage did occur. Residents around Lake Okeechobee were told to evacuate before the arrival of the storm, but after the storm didn't arrive for several hours, some of them returned believing that the storm had missed the area. The hurricane storm surge caused chaos on Lake Okeechobee and the southern end of the lake overflowed and flooded hundreds of square miles of land area to its south. Over 2,500 died here, along with 1,200 in Guadeloupe earlier in the storm's life. And then came the hurricane of 1933, which struck near Jupiter. This storm formed in the open Atlantic and moved west-northwest past the Lesser Antilles and then through the northern Bahamas at its peak intensity as a Category 4 hurricane. The storm weakened slightly but still made landfall in Florida as a major hurricane with winds of 125 miles per hour sustained. On the Bahamas and in the area surrounding Jupiter, Florida, significant damage occurred. The wider area received heavy rainfall and was flooded. There were three fatalities and $3 million in damages in total. Two years later, and this time it was the Florida Keys receiving its big storm, the Labor Day Hurricane of 1935. 
The year 1935, whilst uneventful in the North Atlantic, did feature a few intense storms, and indeed eight cyclones formed in total that year, uh, with Florida and the Caribbean caught in the crosshairs. Uh, though no one would have said that before August the 29th, and that was the date when what became known as the Labor Day hurricane formed, and indeed pummeled the Florida Keys and then moved on to the rest of the state. And uh, we're pretty much standing at the landfall point of the storm, um, here on Craig Key on September the 2nd, there was a ferocious Category 5 storm uh, with uh, one of the most intense air pressures of any Atlantic storm ever to make landfall in the United States. Jack Bevan from the National Hurricane Center explains more. It is actually the third strongest hurricane of record in the Atlantic Basin, as best as we can determine. Central pressure went down to 892 millibars, had a very small eye and killed 400 people down in the middle Florida Keys when it took a lot of people by surprise with how strong it was. Damages totaled six million dollars and the Keys' railway link was destroyed and never rebuilt. This next storm is known as the Fort Lauderdale Hurricane which struck the area in 1947, again as another major hurricane. Another long tracking storm, this hurricane peaked as a Category 4 twice, both out at sea and on its final approach to southern Florida, making landfall at that intensity. 17 were killed in Florida with significant wind damage and even worse flooding due to the whole region having received large amounts of rain before the storm. Flooding also occurred in Louisiana where the storm made its final landfall, still with winds of 110 miles per hour. In all, the storm caused 51 fatalities and $110 million in damages at the time. In the next part, we'll be taking a look at more recent storms.